that fire behind you looks lovely. Uh, I'm actually at a University of Minnesota facility. This is the Alumni Center and there's a um, fire and there's also all sorts of skylights over in the presentation area, which is sort of fascinating. Like, Very cool. I was going to ask if that was a virtual fire or a real one. I think it's a gas fireplace, but I mean, it is producing a little bit of heat. I found like one of the only quiet places to sit because lunch is still going on here. Central time. Hey, Bridget, long time I see. All right, hello all. Good, uh, Bridget, it's a comfort to hear that someone else is in central time zone. I was beginning to think the world just ran in Pacific. I'm just. Uh, I mean, the fact that it's 1 p.m. and everyone thinks it's morning is uh, evidence of that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Nice. I am, oh, Nicolay uh, beat me to it. Very good. Um, so a link to the meeting minutes are in the chat. Uh, so I might repeat this um, a time or two, and, and Matt may as well. Uh, but this uh, SIG is just, uh, just forming, just getting underway. And so uh, today it is... We're, as we end the call today, it will be it will be launched. <laughs> we will we have done some some earnest considerations. So I'm excited for today's agenda. This is this is great. By the way, my my name is Lee. If uh, if I haven't um, spoken to you before, uh, Matt Klein is on the call as well. Uh, so by hi, uh, Matt is the TOC liaison for this SIG. Um, so in some respects, the sponsor for the SIG, if you will. Um, uh, Ken Owens is also um, co-chairing this uh, SIG network along with me. Um, so as we've begun to establish uh, practices for the meetings, if you would, not dissimilar from many other open source calls that you're on, um, the meeting minutes are a collaboration, uh, much, like, um, much like the work that you guys do out in, the, in open source land. So, uh, if you don't mind, you know, record your attendance. Um, today, just two items, if we can, I'm, I'm hopeful and assuming that we can get them both in. And those two items are trying to address uh, one of Matt's top concerns, actually, and, and concerns of others. And that is uh, the fact that there's a mounting backlog of projects proposed for incorporation or, or donation into the CNCF. Uh, that, that's been building for some time. And so the two that are up for um, initial you know, presentation and a feedback review today is uh, Contour, Project Contour, and Service Mesh Interface, or SMI. And so I'll try to speak and type at the same time a little bit if I can. Um, do we, I know we've got representation today from Project Contour. I was just having an interaction with folks representing SMI. And I see some of them on the call now, very good. And some of those folks may even be representing both of the project, I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> but we're, we're covered either way, so good. So very good, five after. Uh, Hopefully that sets some, some pretext. Uh, many of you are familiar with these types of, of presentations and, um, and reviews. Um, any additional context, Matt, that you might want to set before we invite uh, the Contour team to present? Uh, I don't think so. I think you did a great, great overview. Sounds great. OK, very good. Um, so uh, Mr. Michael. Yeah, hi everybody. So uh, this is kind of the first time we're uh, uh, we're looking at this uh, new way of basically presenting uh, projects to the different SIGs. So uh, I'm not sure I know what to expect for, from from uh, from your team. Has anybody had a chance to look at our PR that we filed for Contour that has some of the relevant details? And there's a link in the meeting minutes as well for that. Yes. Um, if you guys haven't, that's, that's okay. We can go over that 
in a very very quick way um, but essentially contour and and we're going to show you guys some slides and talk a little bit about the architecture but it's an ingress controller is built on top of envoy um, we're very active in the kubernetes community or we have a mission to make this one of the best ingress controllers for kubernetes make it scalable available uh, secure and our goal is to get it adopted by CNCF and donate it in the incubation level. We have a couple of uh, CNCF uh, TOC sponsors already, Alexis, Matt, and Joe Beda. And um, we were redirected to the SIG network to make sure that you guys do some due diligence on, on Contour. Um, for I know that for graduate projects, there's this big technical due diligence document that needs to be created. Uh, I'm assuming we don't need to go to that length for, for incubation, but we wanna find out from you guys, what is it that you wanna see from us to start procuring beyond the presentation as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and actually let me apologize up front. I think Michael, you'd asked this question of me a, a few days ago about uh, you know items to bring and, and um, things to prepare. And I didn't get back to you, we actually have a, something of a template for um, th things that we're looking for. I expect that of what you've sent, I expect you, you've got th those things that, that, that we would, that we're looking for in one review. I'll send out that template post after the call because it'll be yeah. really useful after the call. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd, that'd be great. If you can email me that template, I'll, I'll make sure that we basically provide all the information that, that that's basically been asked for us. Nice. Um, so I'm going to go through this presentation. We have a few team members here as well. We have uh, Steve uh, Sloga, we have David Cheney, uh, and Tim Hinderleider. Um, different folks will talk at different areas since you know they they have uh, expertise, and it's better to hear it from the actual folks that build certain components of the architecture. But um, I'm assuming you can all see my screen. We can. And actually, Michael, two two quick things to set context for, and just help provide clarity on. One is that, uh, you know, and I'll caveat a lot of things that I say here, like, unless I'm, unless I'm mistaken, or rather, it's my understanding that, uh, that yes, that projects that go into uh, incubation stage, uh, at that point, um, do go under the a full due diligence uh, for projects. So, so kind of this presentation, that I, there's a number of other items for due diligence. Um, I think that Clearly, there's a distinction between incubation level and, and graduation, but I think the, the diligence um, is the same. Yeah, no, no, no problem. And we'll, we'll execute uh, once you send me the the, the requirements on that uh, template that you guys have. We'll fill them in, and I think most of those uh, map directly to the diligence as well. Nice. The, so that was uh, I'm going to pop over a link to that due diligence note about. Um, incubation stage and it and it, I think applying at that time. The second note, and this is, um, I think, other than Ken, who might be on the call uh, now or at some point, it, he might be one of the only others that that recollect this that were around at the time. But uh, prior to CNCF SIGs, uh, there and, and many of you have been in, in some other work working groups, but one of them was the networking working group, and CNI, the Container Network Interface, um, actually presented in that working group kind of in advance of presenting to the TOC. I think it was the 10th project to come through, if memory serves. So there's a little bit of, at least for, of my experience and my, my part, there's, there's some precedence for sort of uh, funneling in this way. But, uh, but I think this is, you guys are certainly one of the first to be presenting in context of a SIG. And I'll, and I'll say that we are, even of the template that I'll send after this, that template is just being formed and beginning to be standardized across the rest of the SIGs. So, so yeah, and, and, and we, meet, we meet all of these incubation state requirements. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the customers later on, uh, but we meet uh, all, of the, all of the requirements. I've, I've seen this before many times since I'm also trying to get harbored to the graduation stage. So we'll, we'll, we'll create a document and work with you guys to produce the due diligence doc uh, and setting also your template questions. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that within the next uh, week or so. Okay, so, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Contour. So our website is projectcontour.io. Um, we're, an like I mentioned earlier, we're an open source Kubernetes ingress controller. 
uh, were built on top of the Envoy Edge and Service Proxy. And we are basically built to support both dynamic configuration updates who, are, who work really well with multi-teams that want to uh, provide ingress delegation, um, as well as, um, uh, you know, making sure that that delegation is done in a very secure way. So our mission is to be the most secure, performance, scalable, and available ingress controller for Kubernetes. And we're also looking to expand into that as we're having more and more scenarios that are working within the, within the Envoy community. Um, from an architecture standpoint, I want uh, Steve uh, that created this diagram to walk you guys through this really quickly. Uh, Steve? Sure. Uh, so, um, like Michael said, um, Contour is an ingress controller for Kubernetes. So, um, what you'll see here is you'll see Contour is the ingress controller. So, its job is to look at the cluster um, and look for resources, services, endpoints, secrets, um, ingress objects, and then some custom CRDs that we've built um, from the Contour project. Um, when it sees those changes, it'll pass that configuration down to Envoy. Envoy is the data path component, so all traffic routes through Envoy. Um, so it handles all of the actual data proxying and, and heavy lifting of network traffic. Um, Contour is designed so that you need to attract data or attract um, requests to Envoy. That can be done a number of different ways. Typically, you have a load balancer in front, so in some sort of cloud environment. Uh, but again, in, in a different type of environment, just as long as you can attract traffic, uh, this, this will work. Uh, functionally well. Uh, but in any case, uh, traffic hits some sort of load balancer and then gets sent to Envoy and then that routing decision happens there at that Envoy layer to where um, traffic can go. Um, and then again, when, when changes happen in Contour, it'll you know, reprocess re some configuration and pass that down to Envoy. Um, that connection is over gRPC, so it's a rich data connection. Um, so we can update Envoy without losing connections from requests coming in. Is that enough? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Steve. Does anybody have any questions uh, on, on this at the high level? Nope. nope, it's clear to me. All right, moving on. Um, and, you know, just to give you guys a little bit more visibility here, if you were, were to view Contour deployment in a Kubernetes environment, um, you see that, you know, we have an Envoy daemon set that, that deploys the Envoy's pods. And then we also have a Contour deployment uh, that basically um, uh, handles everything from the search generation jobs to the secrets are mounted into the pods to secure the, the communication. And then we watch objects uh, in the ingress service endpoint. Um, and we have HTTP proxy, which is our latest uh, API, uh, but also ingress route, which we're deprecating uh, from the past. And uh, I don't think we need to go into more details here unless anybody has any questions. All right, so uh, from a project overview, um, it, it start, uh, Contour started uh, at Heptio uh, either near November of 2017, about a little bit over two years ago. And we released our 1.0 release in November 2019, essentially signaling to the community that we're entering a stable backwards compatible API uh, release of Contour. Uh, from an implementation standpoint, we have uh, five plus product implementations um, that are basically some are commercial products like uh, the ones that VMware is publishing like Essential PKS and a couple of others that are coming down the line right now. We've just completed an integration so that Knative can offer Contour as an ingress controller uh, for Knative and Flagger has also done an implementation with Contour uh, to provide it as an ingress controller within their uh, product portfolio. We don't have uh, entirely all the complete statistics in terms of the contributing organizations. We're, since we're not in uh, CNCF yet, we don't have access to dev stats. So some of this data needs to be gathered manually and we're working on basically gathering all of that. Uh, but we have over 100 plus community members. Looking at some of our high level project statistics, we have uh, over 2.1 thousand GitHub stars, 80 plus contributors on GitHub with 319 forks and close to 2,000 clones. Uh, and the clones are done by almost 200 individual uh, GitHub users. Uh, we have four maintainers, uh, two of them are here on the call, uh, David and, and Steve, who had 42 releases. Um, we, there's no clear way for us to track downloads yet, because of the fact that we have also some 
testing engines are basically pulling images, but we're going to work into uh, getting a number for, for everyone as well. We have 480 Slack members, uh, a ton of Slack messages, but the, some of them are archived and it's very hard to actually uh, get the full number. Uh, over 500 Twitter followers, 2,000 commits, uh, we had 10 blogs, and uh, I'm trying to get a list of all our Cubicon talks that we've had and EnvoyCon talks, but it's about seven uh, in the last couple of years. Um, we've had 1.2 thousand PRs, um, 8,000 GitHub views, and uh, close to 2,000 GitHub unique visitors. So as you see, we have a community and we're gonna show you guys, we're gonna produce some charts uh, as part of the due diligence document that's gonna show that there's a stable uh, number of commits are happening over the last two years on Contour. So the, both the momentum of the project has been stable and increasing over time. And we're also gonna show that the number of contributors have also increased over that same time span. So that's to show you that the project is in good health uh, it's uh, alive and, 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 and well-funded uh, by different organizations, mainly VMware, and uh, it's here to stay. Any questions on this? This is, this is fantastic, by the way. This is, uh, it's, it's no small work not only doing this, but, uh, uh, but then uh, summarizing it all. Uh, let me po poke around a couple of these things, not because the answers to them are um, are necessarily going to matter one way or the next, but it's just uh, a good a point of note. And that is, like, of the forks and the clones, um, are those indicative of the number of, like in the case of clones, is that sort of the number of downloads, if you will? Is that how the project installs? Um, that, that, that could be an indication of folks that just want to basically clone the project and look at the source code, uh, view it in their own repo, maybe make some more changes and, and, and uh, uh, specifically on the forks, it's, we, we know at least of one or two organizations that have forked uh, Contour just because they wanted to add some of their own things and then they have they want to basically push them upstream later on. Um, some of those organizations don't want to be named publicly that they're either using or contributing to Contour. You can think of financial institutions falling into that category. So the best way for them was to, to fork it and start working on their own fork for now. Understood. And so then in terms of, um, I guess the question mark on downloads is the, it, it, what's the most common deployment model or the metric, if there ultimately is one that you would use to, to indicate your know, number of, I guess it's a difference, you know, number of downloads or number of deployments. Is that, is that yeah. Yeah, so, so if for other projects, the way it is done is that if they have a Docker image on Docker Hub, they basically grab the download number for their, from there. They post that. I don't find that to be reliable, which is why I'm not doing something like that. Uh, other folks have a, a Google or an AWS uh, bucket that they post their binaries, and that's how people download them, and they post that. Um, in general, downloads is uh, if you can find the true number, which is very hard, is an indication of deployments. But it's, you know, if someone tells you that they figured a golden formula for this, they're likely lying. There is no easy way to get that. Oh, yeah. we, don't, we, don't, we don't have telemetry that reports back to us how many folks have installed or something like that. So since that doesn't exist, it's very hard to actually pinpoint the number. Um, we'll give you guys a rough estimate on the number of downloads of our binaries, but I don't know how realistic or how much stock you can take into that. I mean, to be clear, we, we use Docker Hub to publish the images and we could put the number up there, but it's a lie. Yeah, that, that, that's why I didn't want to put it. I was trying to do, figure out a better way to, to, to provide that number. But in absence of that, we'll, we'll eventually uh, go with Docker Hub and I'll, I'll, I'll put a caveat there. Uh, totally. we, just, we just want to be honest here. We're, like, I'll give you an example for Harbor. One of yeah. our images has 1 million downloads. I know for sure I don't have 1 million deployments. So those numbers lie. Absolutely. Telemetry is a pervasive problem for um, you know, usage analytics for most open source projects. It's a, it's a shame that it's not uh, just more commonplace. Of the four maintainers, uh, are there, how can you speak to um, their uh, if, you know, organizational affiliation and then the, their focus or responsibility around particular components of, of Contour? Yeah, so the organization affiliation, they're all VMware employees today. Uh, and I'll let David, uh, which is, uh, who is our head uh, technical leader for uh, Contour, talk a little bit about their areas of expertise and areas of contribution. 
David. Hi, uh, my name's David. Uh, I uh, was the first engineer who worked on the project. I started it um, uh, about September 2017. Uh, my background, uh, obviously, I spent some time in the in, in the Go world, but before before that, in a previous life, I uh, was call administrator, uh, SRE, DevOps, sysadmin, all those all those things. I spent a lot of time working uh, with a bunch of load balancers, like in, um, because mainly uh, most of my previous roles were um, B two B uh, or B two C type type um, e commerce e commerce sites. So lots of HTTP uh, stuff, uh, and have worked with almost all of the uh, almost all of the popular open source web services out there: Apache, Nginx, Lighty, Cherokee, all of them. Um, yeah, uh, Michael. Should I speak for the, the other three? Engines yeah, just, the yeah, okay, yeah sure. just, just, just talk a little bit about the areas that they're working on on Contour versus their background, which will be harder to, to basically produce. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Um, gee, to, to try and uh, put put people in boxes, I mean, the the, 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 the the kind of facetious way to say is that we are the four experts in this product in the world because we've worked on it the most, but that's um, not, not, partic not particularly useful. Um, we generally work um, on in, in individual individual feature streams um, because we're, we're a remote team it tends to break down better that way. Um, we have at the moment uh, James, who's not on the call, focusing uh, mainly on our uh, integration tests. We're working we testing is testing is always a challenge, uh, but James is very passionate about in, improving our uh, in. And an integration test so that we can be more sure about uh, when we get a new release of Envoy, uh, rather than just it seems to work. Um, can we you know, really be uh, very very sure about uh, about that it works? Um, Steve uh, is uh, focused a lot on um, the, the individual features, uh, like the, the features focused towards the um, towards the customer. Um, he's been working on uh, things like uh, up, upstream features. Uh, rate limiting, I know, is one that he's really wanted to work on for a long time, and we'll, we'll land it we'll land it soon. Um, and Nick uh, is the uh, kind of uh, point point person on ingress features. He's working uh, closely with the SIG uh, SIG service service APIs um, because one of our goals is that. Um, Part of, part of the, the thing that came out of adding our HTTP proxy support is Contour has the ability to use multiple, uh, to consume multiple uh, ways of describing ingress and CRDs. Um, like we're not closely tied to any one ingress document and that gives us the ability to integrate new ones. So as we get, go from ingress v1 beta to ingress v1 and we go to ingress v2, um, we have the ability to integrate those at a re reasonably low cost. And so part of the commitment we've said to, uh, to Bowie, uh, Bowie and those folks is, we want to be your first user. We want to be your, you know, forget beta, we want to be your alpha user. As soon as those types are available, we will integrate them in Contour and we can you know, scratch it and sniff and see if, see if this actually makes sense. Um, Very good. So that's- Very good, and actually the initial question was just, just aimed at kind of two things, sort of the, assessing the, the bus factor, if you will, for the four maintainers, just the, um, and then also assessing the, um, uh, um, the of the, the affiliation of those maintainers and the, the governance of the project, the, the um, decision makers for for that maintaining and their alignment, their the, the health the healthiness healthiness of the the diversity of the maintainers. I guess is what I was. Yeah, absolutely. So so today the diversity is mostly VMware, but we are a very open and welcoming community. We have uh, we have uh, community meetings multiple times a month, which are open and at flexible time zones, so other folks can come in and contribute. For example, Matt Moore from uh, from the K Native community just came in and added uh, K Native support in, into Contour in a matter of about three four weeks of work, just uh, engaging with our community and getting that uh, up and running. So. Um, uh, the flagger folks did the integration with very minimal uh, interaction with us, but we are we welcome more maintainers. If other folks want to come in and contribute to the project, to, we're going to have a flexible governance to enable them to come in and contribute and have a seat at the table. 
Um, and I want to mention one more thing before we leave this slide on the Cubicon talks. Uh, Steve Sloka and, and one other person from our team had a presentation at Cubicon that had almost 10% of Cubicon attendees signed up for it. So that was huge. We almost had like a thousand people sign up for that presentation. Uh, the room could not accommodate that many, but there were a lot of folks. There were more than 500 people in the room. I don't know how many, but it was a lot. I just want to uh, just chime in on uh, contributions. Like this is something that I'm very, like personally, very, very passionate about. Um, and part of the way, part of the way to do that is like, I have a very strong policy. We do everything in GitHub. We try and keep as much as possible in the open. We, um, we, we're trying. Sometimes it's very easy to fall back to old habits, but actually trying to have like, like we have, we have a contour channel inside VMware, but we actually try and use the public one on the Kubernetes Slack even for like a like developer chit chat, just like talking back and forth about like, what's this bug? Did you break this? Did you see these things? We try and do as much as possible in the open. Um, recruiting contour contributors is hard. Keeping them is about 10 times harder than that. So everybody that we can make feel welcome is crucial. Thank you. All right, so let's move on the customer profiles really quickly. So, so Contour is being used both uh, in production, pre-production, staging at many different customers. We have a GitHub customer testimonials uh, link up on top. There's only one uh, testimonial there. Uh, our problem is a lot of folks, a lot of customers are using uh, ingress controls. They don't want to basically talk about what they're using for the front door of their Kubernetes clusters publicly. We have a major financial institution that has basically made Contour the default ingress controller for all the Kubernetes clusters, and they have a lot of them. Uh, we have one of the leading online marketplaces that uses Contour in production today. Knative, I mentioned earlier, uh, Knative is gonna provide an option for uh, uh, Contour to be an ingress controller uh, in their product portfolio. Uh, Cilium, and I included a link there where they talk about uh, Contour. And then Flagger also has um, uh, an implementation with Contour as an ingress controller. Furthermore, Adobe had a presentation uh, at Cubicon 2019. It was a landing talk. So I'm referencing that they're big users of Contour and they talked about uh, the architecture and, and how they've implemented it within their infrastructure. So they're also uh, big users of ours and we work with them directly. I want to open up for questions now, since I know we're, uh, we have two minutes before the uh, half of the hour and I know there's one more presentation coming up, but um, please ask us questions. We'll finish the template. We'll get back to you guys very soon with that. And we'll also publish the due diligence document as well for, for, uh, for your viewing. This is fantastic. This is the last question for me and, and maybe Matt or, or others have some. And, and that is the, um, if you would, um, maybe between Matt and yourselves is the consideration uh, and thoughts around Contour as an, a sub-project of Envoy uh, versus uh, separate. So we've had that conversation. I'm gonna let Matt explain it in his words because he did talk about Contour being a, a sub-project of Envoy before. Yeah, it's uh, something that we talked about. Um, I think it's certainly an option. I, I, I think from my perspective, speaking more from the, from the Envoy side of things, is it, it would be complicated, uh, both in the sense that we don't have any process yet from the project perspective to uh, take a project like this in. We've done some project adoptions, but this would be of a, of a different type and scale than before. So we'd have to develop, uh, you know, all those procedures. And to be totally frank and honest, the larger problem is that um, it would be politically quite complicated uh, just because Contour has quite a few competitors uh, and then all who use Envoy. And then, you know, there's some question of, of what that would look like within, within the Envoy org in terms of picking, say, a default ingress controller. So my advice to the Contour team was that uh, a direct CNCF um, donation makes more sense right now. I, I, think, I think it's just simpler. Um, if in the future, you know, we want to eventually move it under the Envoy org, I, I don't think this precludes that. Um, but I, I think this is probably the easier thing to do for right now. Thank you for that, Matt. I actually can't really imagine that you've got 
uh, that you really have to deal much with politics uh, in terms of uh, the pervasive use of uh, Envoy and all of the all that comes with that. So, is that a joke? Yes, that was my horrible. Oh, way. okay. I, I couldn't tell if you were joking <laughs> because, wow, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so deadpan. Perfect. Yeah, no, it was it, it was a very serious statement. I couldn't tell if you were joking or not. Uh, <laughs> uh, Michael, uh, Steve, um, uh, Dave, uh, thanks so much, guys. This is uh, that, that was that was beautiful. That was what we'll. we'll uh, I won't be tardy with uh, following up with you, Michael. Um, so this is great. Excellent. Thank, thank you. Question. And Lee, I, I did want to let you guys know, I did post, um, it has been updated. It was like a, the last update was three months ago. There is a due diligence review template out in the TOC um, um, in GitHub. And so it does kind of give you a rough idea of what the TOC is looking for to go into the different levels. And I'm sure it's going to change um, as the SIGs get kind of looked at, but at least there's a, Gives you a rough idea of what was being thought of at the time for the diligence. Yeah, and, and that's the one we followed for Harbor. So if you want us to follow that one, we'll go with that. Correct. Yep. It's at least a starting point, and it may shift in some, but there's a lot of good information, and that's why I don't think it's going to completely change. Thank you very much. And any other questions for the Contour team? Uh, I had a quick one. Uh, so uh, this probably to David. Uh, I don't know whoever uh, can answer it. Please answer. Uh, of course, sh shortly. No need to go deep. So uh, when you started the project, like two years ago, a little bit more than two years ago, uh, what were the gaps that you identified that are out there in the open source landscape in this domain, and how would you compare this to today's state of this landscape? Are there any new projects uh, coming up? Something that overlaps with? the goals that you had back then, uh, how would you position today against the landscape? Okay, um, there are probably two parts to this question. The first part is um, with, with all, all, all due respect to, to Matt, two years ago, the kind of standout hit that Envoy that we all know today wasn't as clear two years ago. Um, so, uh, this, this this was a little bit experimental, but also um, almost immediately as I started the project, I realized how good a fit the Envoy XDS APIs were for the declarative, the, the kind of declarative nature of the Kubernetes API. Like it was a um, a very neat fit. Um, the the second second part of the question, which I'm struggling to remember, um, the second part I was going to approach it as. How, how, how we changed today? Well, that really, um, really what changed as we got into the project was we realized that the, let's be honest, the Kubernetes ingress API that exists today um, is extremely limited. Now, again, two years down the track, there's a lot of work to fix it, but two years before that, there certainly wasn't. And so that's why we went, uh, went, our, went our own way with uh, using uh, ingress route, which then evolved into HTTP proxy to solve problems that we were seeing with our customers who were struggling to make multi-tenant, multi-tenancy using the traditional uh, networking beta one ingress API work. Um, is, that, is that helpful? Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, from, from my point of view, um, I'm Tim, I'm the, the people manager around here. Um, the, the purpose of Contour then and now is really twofold. It's multi-tenancy is really the key um, bullet point in features and compared to some of the other options um, the surface area of uh, Contours API as it were the document description is much smaller um, partly because the original the, the de facto ingress specification has evolved over many years but you can see it so uh, the Contour project has stayed really true to keeping things you know, uh, very good defaults and not even exposing knobs. Um, you know, the, for instance, I always use is we don't support TLS 1.0 because you shouldn't use that. So uh, you, you can get going in either the simple kick the tires case or complex enterprise um, configuration with all of the benefits of multi-tenancy 
pretty quickly. And I think those goals still sort of stand. Um, so. Okay, thanks. All right, very good. Um, and next up is uh, service mesh interface. And so we've got a, f a couple of folks representing from that project today. And um, Lockie, is, uh, is this you or are, are you up? Actually, uh, thanks, Lee. Thomas is going to be taking it. Thomas, I'll pass you the reins. Perfect. Let me uh, get some slides up and we can get started here. Okay, I'm going to assume everybody can see this. So let me give the high level of uh, what SMI is all about first. So the idea is that uh, service meshes are awesome and starting to really proliferate, uh, especially at uh, KubeCon San Diego. We saw kind of AWS adopting at mesh, console, connect coming out, uh, Istio, Linkerd. We're all got really great innovation in this space. and uh, it's introducing some interesting constraints on uh, users and implementers. And to be honest, I think that at this point in time, we've got a really standard feature set. So the idea was to come at this from a definition perspective and talk a little bit about um, how we can produce an interface that all of the service meshes can interact with and then all the integrations can go on top of. So. Let's talk a little bit about what SMI covers. These are the three major pieces that we saw from users that they wanted from a service mesh. The traffic policy, aka access control and identity, uh, telemetry, those are the golden metrics that every S3 wants, and uh, traffic management, which would be a flagger style canary rollouts and uh, more complicated solutions there. And we really focused as a project on those three things more than anything else. So why does the ecosystem need it? Well, number one, uh, we're striving really hard to be provider agnostic. Uh, benefits on both sides here. The users get to have choice. The integrators get to integrate against a single API and work across all of the backends. And um, the service mesh Implementers don't need to go and dream up new APIs. They can go and use what's kind of been suggested and as best practices for the ecosystem. So that's kind of where we're going there. This is a better picture, I think, of kind of what I'm talking about there, which is you've got apps queuing an ecosystem on the top of the service mesh, inter service mesh interface. And then uh, on the bottom, you've got all of the really great service meshes that have come along and provided fantastic functionality there. So going back to those three use cases, uh, we actually have technically four APIs today. Uh, traffic metrics is the most obvious one uh, that builds off of the um, policies that are put together by the met metrics and custom metrics API in Kubernetes and then adds the gold metrics, which would be uh, success rate, throughput, and latencies. Uh, traffic split is the ability to do canaries with a uh, orchestrator like Flagger doing the canary rollout itself. Then we have uh, traffic specs that let you explain how a traffic looks. The idea here is that these are a requirement of access control so that you can do per route uh, access control as well as doing it on a service by service basis. So that's kind of where we are today. Uh, let's talk a little bit about who we've done this with. Uh, I've been having a really fantastic time working on SMI and myself because of how many great partners we have. It's really a cross industry thing. and We've been getting a lot of fantastic feedback uh, from pretty much everybody, both service mesh providers and folks uh, like Kubecast who are building solutions on top of service meshes for their users. Uh, in fact, that leads into this slide, which is all of the ecosystem implementations that we have today. Uh, my favorite one is uh, Mesh, which just decided to use SMI without talking about to any of us, launched their product, and then joined into the uh, conversation and now a big part of the community there. So all of this leads into goals and non-goals. The primary goals are being agnostic. Uh, making sure that it's vendor neutral and solving real world problems for users, both where users are end users as well as uh, 
implementers on top from an ecosystem perspective and the service meshes themselves. Uh, a non-goal is to implement a service mesh. I don't think any of us want to do that. Uh, we're already building those as projects. Um, obviously, I spend time on Linkerd, and that's already a CNCF project. And I think that users should have the choice for what is the best solution for their problems. Um, we don't require implementation of specific SMI APIs. So the important part here is, is that we're not being prescriptive. Uh, if a service mesh wants to just support traffic splits, uh, that's all they need to do. In fact, we have a long conversation that uh, Lee is a part of in SMI about uh, compliance and providing users visibility into what is and isn't supported so that it's a incremental slow thing instead of this big bang requirement that everybody needs to implement. Um, but also, we don't want to restrict what it is to be a service mesh. Uh, a great example there is, is a lot of the functionality inside of Istio that's absolutely fantastic is not something that Linkerd is likely to ever adopt, and that's okay and should be a big part of the ecosystem there. Cool. So uh, a quick technical overview is uh, kind of three parts. We've got some Kubernetes CRDs. This goes back to SMI being Kubernetes centric. Um, while we're having conversations about how to bring in the rest of the real world, uh, we're sticking really hard to our guns on Kubernetes being the one true way moving forward. Uh, we have an SMI provider to act on the APIs. Uh, there's a Go SDK for folks to use. Uh, there's extension APIs to build on top of things, and uh, the resources are obviously configurable. The thing that I like to bring up the most, however, is that SMI isn't actually just a spec project. We actually have quite a bit of software and components in it. Uh, we've got the SMI metrics extension API server that actually works for Istio and Linkerd today. Um, we're moving init container functionality into SMI. Uh, it's a common pattern that all of the service meshes are adopting at this point and really should just share the implementation. And then uh, the whole point behind that is that we can go innovate on functionality that's unique and interesting to our implementations instead of just doing the same patterns over and over again. My selfish goal here is that uh, once we start to have these common patterns of software, we'll be able to go and get uh, those patterns to be smoother. For example, uh, sidecars being a first class citizen inside of Kubernetes. So uh, here's links to the community and related repositories, uh, website, GitHub, we're doing meetings, they're all public. They've been fantastic for uh, figuring out where everybody's going there. And uh, I think that's it there, let's see. So uh, benefits of CNCF inclusion. Uh, the biggest one for me is the association with C Kubernetes and other CNCF projects. Uh, I continue to reiterate the whole point of this is a community and an ecosystem and CNCF is the right place for that as a vendor neutral home for everyone. We like to work with Jaeger, we like to work with Kiali, we like to work with Istio and Linkerd, uh, the blue folks, pretty much every project inside of CNCF and out of it is fantastic as an ecosystem and a community organization. Uh, the other big part of this is that as Part of being vendor neutral, we're able to go and get more com community contributors and speed up the adoption of both the API spec itself and the software components inside of that. And then finally, uh, CNCF is the elephant in the room when it comes to cloud native and Kubernetes in particular, since we've hitched our, uh, hitched our horse to that cart. And so that's all a big part of that for us. Uh, just a quick look into what our project priorities are today. Uh, we wanna get all of the SMI APIs up to a stable state, though obviously we're gonna go through beta to get there. Uh, we wanna get our SDK have a stable release. In fact, uh, we just landed a Go, generated Go client for the SMI metric stuff uh, earlier this week. So lots of great work there. We've been uh, chatting with all of the service mesh integrations. Kuma is the top of our list to get them building on top of the SMI uh, APIs, and then uh, going and getting additional ecosystem tooling. Flagger's already there. We're having active conversations with Kiali. Uh, the Tilt and Meshery folks, obviously, Lee, thank you. 
um, working towards that. And then finally, that conformance test suites where we want to make it so that it's not confusing to users and integrators what's going on and how they can actually integrate. So to wrap everything up, we want folks to get started quickly. We want it to be simple so that users can understand it and we can go and provide end user benefits as well as implementers. And we want to be as ecosystem friendly as possible. With the call to action being uh, at the end of this meeting, we'll have the PR up and would love all of the discussion and any questions you have that we don't answer here to go into that PR. Wonderful. This is good. It, um, okay, just a quick time check. So we, we, we do have a fair bit of time for some questions. Um, maybe the, the first one that will help drive some additional questions or, or how or how much homework or how, how deep to dig, if you will, um, is it, well, is maybe a, a question to the SMI team. Do or is there a consideration around uh, entry into sandbox or entry in as an incubation project? And Lucky, you want to take that one? Sure, I'd love to take it. Thank you. Um, I'll catch the ball. Uh, yeah, we had originally reviewed the uh, graduation criteria as posted on um, the CNCF GitHub, and we felt that we it could be considered for incubator. Um, but obviously, we're at the you know coming under the auspices of whatever the uh, CNCF SIG network and TOC decides. Either sandbox or incubation, um, we're happy to go either way. So yeah. I think we'll just we'll post. Um, post it up and if people have comments we're happy to hash it out on the PR my my personal feeling just from a public perspective is that I, I think sandbox is a no-brainer um, I'm personally less sure about incubation um, I, I, I think this, we're very early days within this within uh, this ecosystem um, I also frankly have concerns and maybe this is something that we could talk about on this call is that I think SMI can easily devolve into the current Kubernetes ingress, which is it's <laughs> the lowest common denominator that doesn't end up actually working for anyone. Um, so I, I'd actually like to talk about that point. Um, but, but just because of, I think of those general concerns and just how early it is. I, I guess my advice would be, I think sandbox will be completely non-controversial. Um, I think incubation may be more controversial. It, it, it might happen. Like, I'm not sure how people would, would vote or what people would think. Um, but I, I do think that just given what has happened, particularly again with Kubernetes ingress over the last several years, um, there's probably going to be some reservations about this type of type of spec. Uh, so I'll jump in here too. Um, can you hear me? Okay. I've had some audio. Yeah, we got you. Oh, great. Uh, so, you know, I, I originally I had, um, I recommended incubation looking at, you know, the adoption uh, in the last several months and how um, uh, there has been several uh, meshes just adopt uh, SMI in production. But I totally agree with you, Matt, in that, you know, sandboxes, is non-controversial and I don't think that the team really cares one way or another. I think that what we're really after is that vendor neutral home. Uh, we want to have, you know, a common touch point to talk to all of the meshes and the Ingress V2 people and any other tooling uh, in this space. So um, really uh, either way is fine. And I'm for Sandbox. And one note, I'll step in here. We are starting to be able to do the actual annual review process with everyone. So being able to actually come back toward like the end of this year, early next year, and be able to be reviewed for um, incubation probably wouldn't be the worst thing either. Right. Um, uh, you know, in addition, maybe just to uh, my counsel would be would be the same uh, in you know in part adding to what each of you said also in part based on I think well maybe before I say a couple of other things that I would say that there's another question to be asked and that would 
also bear weight on some of the particulars of the requirements around the different levels. So the question is, um, and I'm in most respects asking a number of these questions for the for, for uh, uh, being very familiar with SMI myself, but but kind of for the, the public record here and for the going through the, the process, but is, um, well, uh, let me be long winded about this and say, uh, there is uh, some prior presses. So, so it has long been said that the, the CNCF is not a standards body. It doesn't intend to necessarily produce uh, uh, internet standards um, per se. That said, the difference between uh, and the value between a standard and a specification, adoption and dotting T's and crossing I's and, and these things, we could have a long conversation about all of these things. Rather, the, there is some precedent for, um, I spent a lot of time inside of the uh, serverless uh, working group, um, as did um, Ken, who's on the call as well, and helping navigate that uh, fine line uh, successfully to the extent that um, cloud events as a specification did enter into sandbox first, um, did come forth even at a time where specification standard was um, pretty confused and, and, and is being, you know, I think quite successful as being adopted as 1.0. And so the question is, to, to be short-winded about it now, is, uh, is is SMI uh, intended to, is its future pointed toward a, a standard um, or is its future a specification? I mean, I think that's hard, very difficult to answer. If it, if it appears to go towards standards, sure. You know, if we tee it up that way, but you know, as a specification and providing value in this ecosystem, the CNCF ecosystem specifically, I think we want to at least focus on that um, and, you know, I've heard similar things about specification. We've got cloud events, we've got um, tough, um, which has recently got, even graduated. I think having more specifications in the CNCF will, um, you know, if the TOC is favorable to that behavior, I think, you know, it'll only make it better for subsequent specifications to find a, a good home in the CNCF. Um, I do want to quickly address one thing that Matt brought up was the ingress lowest common denominator. Um, value proposition here. And I think it's interesting because Ingress specifically, and even off the back of Contour, you know, uh, those kind of abstractions were very early Ingress specifically. Um, and if you go and take a look at Ingress V2, actually it, it takes a lot of what Contour did and some of what SMI did in terms of extensibility that is not driven by annotations, which was one of the big gripes um, for Ingress V1. And with that extensibility kind of framework, you can actually have deep integration and of provide more uh, value other than lowest common denominator. And I think the other areas that I would um, draw to example are CSI, CNI, CRI, C star I, I will just say. Um, C star I interfaces across the CNCF ecosystem have allowed this same behavior to exist and have extensibility uh, points that um, provide useful, uh, because I think storage is infinitely more complex than service mesh, um, and CSI is still providing value as an abstraction to um, both users and storage implementers in the ecosystem. So, you know, Ingress, I think, is one that people have a, a rough trot, maybe a, a bad taste in their mouth, but I think Ingress t V2 is kind of bringing a non least common denominator um, and extensibility points which allow a value uh, to exist. The other thing for SMI specifically is we're seeing ecosystem tools like Flagger, um, Kiali, um, and other tools in the ecosystem look to SMI rather than having to implement every service mesh under the hood. So for them to provide value to all the service meshes by implementing a single API. Um, so that's that's what I uh, think about starting with abstractions and standardization across these things. I've definitely, from the spec perspective itself, spend a lot of time adding the um, extensibility points. From my perspective as someone who works on Linkerd on a regular basis, I don't want to be, have all of my flexibility taken away to go and innovate and do new and interesting things. And so taking a look at the ingress spec and what's happened and some of the other specs like uh, CNI, I think, is a great example of 
something that came along and really just blew up all kinds of really fantastic innovation early on in the Kubernetes space. And that's where I see the service mesh space going, the, you know, the calicos and the weaves and the flannels of the world are there and fantastic and really doing a great job. And I think that that's where the same place that SMI fits into. Uh, so, <clears throat> so good. So uh, if it isn't, and I'm trying not to make it too obvious uh, how excited I am that we're having this SMI discussion. So, uh, so th this is uh, fantastic. Um, so good. I think we got, we characterize kind of standard and, and spec. Um, you know, there had been a question earlier about uh, the, the common use of Apache V2 as, um, as a license for many of the, you know, the, the most common license used for projects that enter into the CNCF and sort of a stated preference for that license. Um, uh, and I thought I would uh, say on the call here that of the, um, the Open Web Foundation agreement that's used as a license for SMI, um, that, that to my knowledge, there, is, uh, there, there won't be contention um, as a consideration for a project that comes into the CNCF. Uh, the OCI uses that license as well. Um, I understand that, for, you know, that there's a choice around that license as it has different implica implications around uh, patents, um, but that, the, that that's a, a license friendly to the CNCF or that the, the CNCF is friendly to that license. So. Good, good to have that um, you know, confirmed. And so, so Michelle, I think you were fo following up on that, but um, I don't anticipate an um, issue there. Yeah, and just to be transparent about kind of how this stuff works, um, the CNCF has uh, a legal team um, that is, is very well versed in, in this area. And so they've, you know, come out with, hey, like for the best practice for CNCF projects is to use Apache V2 um, along with the DCO. And, uh, and that's, you know, just cut and dry. Um, we do need to go back and talk to the CNCF legal team and staff about potentially um, seeing if using the, is it the Open Web Foundation's um, license for, for specs, whereas like all the other projects that our actual code can remain um, Apache V2. I don't think there's any issue with that. Um, so then there's also a legal committee within the governing board that uh, we may also want to run those tests. So um, I'll work with Lockheed to kind of go through the motions there and see and make sure we're just doing everything the right way. Nobody has any legal issues with it. Awesome. Um, one item, if if it's easy enough for you guys to, to glean, is um, a few, so we, we talked about, I think you presented on community, um, some um, stats, if you would, if, if you have um, contributor and kind of maintainer stats, um, and whether those are specific to the four APIs that are there, or just as a collective for the, for the project, those would be, it'd be good to see those numbers. Um, as you move forward into additional presentations. And by that, I don't necessarily- Yeah, we're, I mean, we're happy to, to show that and I could probably do a quick dive on it. Um, but specifications are by no means measurable to actual code in terms of the number of contributors and the forks and, and stars, and that's by design. The implementations should have all that. So in essence, I would go pull the stars on all the implementations and say that that is a combination of being powered by that spec. But the spec itself across anything, you know, even OCI distribution, which is all the container ecosystem probably got five styles on it. So, sure. you know, if, if we, if I, I'm happy to pull it, but specs are never as interesting as code. I don't disagree. I, uh, yep, so I'm somewhat torn between wearing my, uh, my SIG network hat, right, you know, my the, the hat and the, uh, there is, um, so to just to clarify, um, Michael, if he's still on the call and the, the contour team of the template that I was referring to earlier, it's really a, a template that matches up with the project proposal process. So there's a, a V1.2 and in there it calls for um, stats around uh, community size and existing sponsorship, social media accounts, release methodology and mechanics, 
website versions, issue tracking, blah, blah. And it just kind of goes on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and I've, I've done part of that in the PR and I'll do the rest in the in the technical document as well. So we already, in the PR, yeah. already included that. Uh, it, that is clear to me, actually. I was just um, calling back to you as reference to, uh, for the SMI uh, team as well, that it's, uh, th that I will send out. Um, so so um, Ken has sent out a link to um, due diligence, which applies to incubation and above. But for Sandbox and below, there's also just kind of a, a standard um, set of statistics that um, the contour team that you, you guys covered well, or you, you've, you've got there. Uh, but uh, feedback for the SMI team is to um, uh, try to incorporate, incorporate those as well. We'll, we'll, we'll pop over a, a link, actually, I think I've got it here, which is just helpful. And it's not a, it is, it is not a pushback on the, uh, on the project, rather it's just uh, part of the diligence and part of best foot forward. Look at that, we're at the top of the hour. Anyone else have uh, feedback on these wonderful presentations? I'm thrilled to see these going. These are awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, really. Yeah, really, I'm, I'm excited for, on behalf of everyone else on the call. <laughs> so th this has been great. Uh, I don't wanna hold folks uh, to make them tardy for their, their next call, but um, thanks so much for all of the work you guys have put into these. Um, I can't wait to see things go forward here. And, uh, I'm assuming I'm speaking on behalf of Ken and, and Matt as well, so. Th thank you everyone, really appreciate yeah. it. Have a good day. Thanks so much. Thanks, bye. Bye-bye. Good to see you all. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.